there's a there's a great um, part part in the movie where Dan Slane, a member of the U.S. China Commission, says that we're already in a trade war, and um, I think that's the case. It, it's an, it's an undeclared trade war. Uh, if you think about what trade wars are, they're basically um, when one country uh, bends the rules for advantage, and China has uh, has been doing that uh, very very. Uh, effectively uh, since they joined, joined, joined the WTO. So I don't advocate a trade. Uh, see, here's what's the most interesting thing. If you simply take the currency manipulation issue, okay, if you just take that issue alone, they have an undervalued currency by 40%, gives them an advantage. Uh, it's basically like a tariff on our exports to China and a subsidy to their exports here. Now. That's worked for them up to this point in time. But if you were to let them strengthen their currency now, gradually, say, over a two-year period, it would solve the most fundamental problem facing the Chinese economy, which is they're too export dependent. In order for China to maintain a steady growth rate, they've got to sell to Europe and the, and the US. And now the US and Europe are so weak, they can't do that. So a stronger yuan coupled with health and pension reform would give birth to a Chinese consumer and therefore uh, basically make that country strong, prosperous, and less in conflict with us. <laughs> My own view is that, that China respects strength and exploits weakness. And um, what we've been showing China for a long time now um, is either benign neglect in the Bush administration or flat out weakness in the Clinton administration. One of the first things that Hillary Clinton did, and I've been a fan of hers, but one of the first things she did in 2008 when she became Secretary of State is, is basically announce in a speech that she would not hassle the Chinese government about human rights, that it was all about trade relationships and national security things vis-a-vis -vis North Korea and things like that. Um, the Chinese will exploit that kind of weakness. Um, I believe uh, that if, if Barack Obama had kept his promise that he made in 2008 to the people of Michigan and Pennsylvania to brand China a currency manipulator, that if he'd kept that promise, that we'd have a stronger yuan and a more balanced trade with China. I think that uh, we just simply have to stand up for our own interest, not tolerate cheating, um, and, and I think that the Chinese government will respond positively to that. See, I, you know, look, I think that, that in, in, in one scenario, um, the relationship between China and the U.S. could be wonderful, okay? Um, you go, you'll see in the film, there's this, there's this great um, rhetoric by Bill Clinton talking about how we were going to let China into, the, into WTO and get access to the biggest market in the world, and American companies are going to produce on American soil, sell into that market, okay? If the, if the Chinese government can make the move now, basically, and empower their consumers and move from a third of their economy consumption to two-thirds like Germany, Europe, and we are, okay? They would buy our stuff. We would make at least some of it here. Their standard of living would go up, and life would be good. That's what free and fair trade is supposed to be like. But we don't have that now. And until we have that, the relationship is going to be very, very, very conflicting as it is now. And, and you, know, you can just see what's going on with, with Japan and China and us being drawn into that to know that there's nothing alarmist about a prediction that there could be a hot war. Yeah, things are cheap at Walmart, as Gordon Chang says, but you have to consider the consequences. So, so here's one scenario. You, you have um, income basically zero for the last 10 years. You have 25 million people now out of work. And when they go to a Walmart, they can barely pay for anything. And it's nice to have the prices as low as possible. Scenario two, 25 million people have a job, and they have rising income, and they pay a little bit more for their stuff at Walmart. I like that word a lot better. Well, there's two things. Um, 
Well, we just, there's an interesting thing going on in the campaign trail. Romney comes out and wants to brand China a currency manipulator on his first day in office. Now, the advantage of that is that it's a global solution. In other words, if you, if you impose duties there, it would basically be duties and tariffs across the board and would help all industries in America offset that. On the other hand, Obama, when I was down in Ohio, in fact, in Columbus, the day I was there, he announced some additional cases before the WTO for auto parts. Okay, so far in his administration, he's done like eight cases. That helps very specific industries, but it leaves all the other industries apart. So the WTO is a very, very ineffective mechanism to basically bring somebody to the table on the question of unfair trade practices because you have to go piece by piece, industry by industry, and it takes too long. Uh, well, who's the U.S.? I mean, um, if you look, there's a great, great scene in the film, this guy, Ralph Gomery, um, who is professor emeritus at, I think, MIT and very distinguished man. And he says, he says, he's talking about uh, Apple, and it's like the shareholders get the profits, um, but China gets the wages, right? And, and what America needs is wages. Right? So that's, <laughs> that's the conundrum. So uh, we're in danger in this country. I mean, this whole thing with Romney and the 47% thing, right? it's scary, if you think about it, to have 47% of the people in this country not paying any taxes. I was, I was in Calgary about four days ago giving a speech up there, and, and they were talking all about it because in Canada, it's only 36%. It's only 36%. And so our percentage is rising and rising and rising because we've lost this manufacturing base and we've had zero wage growth. So there it is. We gave away the most powerful tool we had to put pressure on the Chinese government on human rights when we let them into the World Trade Organization. Okay? And the history goes like this. Before China had most favored nation status, which was the precondition for entering the WTO, there was an annual rite of passage in Congress, basically, as to whether or not we were going to renew trade with China under the existing rules. Okay? At that point, there was some trade, but it wasn't a flood. Okay? So we did it. We did it every year, and every year we were able to use that debate to extract concessions from the Chinese government on human rights. Now, 1994 was the year that Bill Clinton, as president, loosened up on that. And you'll see in the film a guy named Chris Smith, conservative Republican who, who focuses a lot on human rights, just disgusted with that because it was a pure sellout to the multinationals that you'll see also in the film. But when we got to 2001, the vote that was held in Congress wasn't to let them into the WTO. It was to give them permanent MFN, permanent most favored nation status. And that was the best bargaining tool we had up until that point to have them abide by more humane human rights abuses. And you will see in the film, do we have any Falun Gong in this room? Does anybody know what that is, Falun Gong practitioners? Okay, you will see in the film that for the practice of Falun Gong Buddhism, it's probably the wrong word, tens of thousands of people have been put, not only put in prison, work in forced labor camps, but some of them have their organs removed while they're still alive by the government as part of an organ harvesting thing. That kind of thing, I mean, our government allows that. We, we allow that. When we go into a Walmart, we as consumers basically tacitly approve that kind of thing. With Chris, there's a great scene, and this I'll, this I'll end it with this. Harry Wu was in a forced labor camp for 19 years. You'll see him in the film. He says in the film, China is a dynasty, no republic, 
not people's country. And he talks about from firsthand experience how the rubber boots we buy, the buttons on our shirts, the Christmas lights, and a lot of stuff in between are made in forced labor camps by people who get no paid at all. And, and when I was in Los Angeles that one time, along with the Tibetan, there was a woman on the stage who's in a movie now that's called Free China. And she sat there and told the audience that in 2002, she was a Falun Gong practitioner in a prison camp making rabbits, little furry rabbits that got sold out into the West. So the human rights issue is one of many, but I'm telling you, this country, as the greatest democracy in the world, has at least some responsibility to do a lot better on that issue than we're doing.